the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Brothers and sisters in Christ, Christ is in our midst. He is in our shadow. Blessed peace to all of you. So today we have uh, the great Feast of Pentecost, in which we commemorate God fulfilling a promise He made to the disciples at the Last Supper. And it's told through the Acts of the Apostles in which the disciples first received the Holy Spirit. And there's many things uh, that we commemorate upon this feast, but one of the things truly that we commemorate is God as a perfect parent. And indeed, we also celebrate and commemorate on this day God's providence. You know, when we look at parenting, for example, you know, one of the things perhaps that weighs the most on any good parent is wanting to make sure that their children has what they need. And every parent is humbled by the realization that one day their children will be in this world without them, and they want to make sure that their children will be okay and that they have everything that we need. And we can tell that that was very much at play at the Last Supper as Jesus was really saying a farewell to the disciples. Things were going to be different after that. They would see Him again, but in a different way. And certainly things uh, would not be the same, but God also knew that things were going to be difficult for the disciples. You see, God is never unfair, and He's never unreasonable. Certainly unfair things happen to us in our life, but not because God made them happen. Sometimes they just happen, and sometimes they're just the result of the free will of others. But when God moves us in our life, or if He prods us to a certain action, or if it's His will that we do a certain thing, it will never be unfair. God would never do that, because that would not be the sign of a good or a healthy parent. And so Jesus, in His love at the Last Supper, knew that as His disciples would go forth to spread the Gospel, that they were going to need help, and that He would not be walking with them in earthly form. And so we remember at the Last Supper, He told them, He said, I will not leave you orphans. In other words, I will not abandon you. But I'm going to send you the Comforter, the Holy Spirit. You see? And so we see God's providence, that He made sure that even though He might not be walking with them in bodily form, that the Holy Spirit would be with them and give them everything that they needed. That when they were at their weakest, they would be at their most strong. And that they would be able to perform deeds and acts that they would never be able to on their own. You see? And so, upon this feast of Pentecost, we celebrate God as a perfect parent. We celebrate God's providence. But we also celebrate and commemorate God fulfilling His promise to the disciples and to all of us that He would not leave us orphans and that He would not abandon us. And we know, brothers and sisters, that one of the most painful injuries we can suffer isn't necessarily physical, but spiritual and emotional. The great aid of abandonment. You see, the human mind and the human soul is very sensitive to a theme of someone not being there for us. It, it leaves a very profound and a very unique injury. One that somebody can even spend a lifetime even healing. And once again, we see God knows that. We see it in the aftermath of the resurrection that God did not leave the disciples saddled with traumatic memories of the betrayal and the crucifixion. You know, we spoke about that a few weeks ago. And he knew that the Holy Spirit would descend upon them, the Comforter, 
and would give them such profound and deep experiences that there's no way those painful experiences could be the defining moments uh, in their life. And so that's what we, we commemorate today. In essence, God telling the disciples, you will never suffer the pain of hurt or no one ever being there for you. For the Holy Spirit will be your companion. It, it will be with you. And of course, all of us, we receive the Holy Spirit upon our baptisms. But to be honest, and this is not a criticism, you know, many of us, we kind of live as though the Holy Spirit isn't there. And it's not out of sin, and it's not because we're weak, but sometimes we just don't know. We don't know how to recognize or how to engage the Holy Spirit. And sometimes we're not able to discern uh, the workings of it uh, in our life. See? And that's okay. But you know, in the Gospel of John, at the Last Supper, it was chapter 14, verse 26, uh, Jesus says to the disciples, you know, He said more specifically, but the Comforter, the Holy Spirit, will be sent to you from the Father in My name. And He will teach you all things and bring to remembrance all the things that I have taught you and that I have said to you. And so one of the main roles of the Holy Spirit uh, in our life, not only does it have the power to make things happen, but it's a teacher. And yet it's also a comforter. And so the Holy Spirit teaches us and also brings to remembrance the things we need to be mindful of and remember. But brothers and sisters, in order to have that relationship, we have to be able to be taught. Are we teachable? It's a very challenging question for each of us to ask ourselves. The reality is, brothers and sisters, is that not all human beings are teachable. We have the potential to be taught. But whether or not we are teachable depends upon do we ever have times or do we ever have states of mind where we don't know? Do we allow ourselves to be in a state where sometimes, man, I just don't know. And I don't pretend to know. And I have a pretty good idea of what I don't know. You see, the answer to that question is critical. And one deliberate exercise that we can do to try to kind of learn to engage the Holy Spirit is to have times or moments when we empty ourselves. And to be very simplistic, and this seems rather self-evident, but to have moments maybe where it's quiet, or we sit outside, or maybe we sit inside in a room with the door shut, and we clean the slate. We clear our mind and we clear our ego specifically. Where we have no thoughts, no feelings, no opinions, no expectations, no angers, no frustrations, no scattered thoughts. And we just sit with simplicity. And we start that activity, of course, with exercise. Lord, please be present with me as I sit here. And we just ponder God. And sometimes outside at that moment, we might notice the wind start to blow through the trees. Brothers and sisters, that's how the Holy Spirit moves through our life. In fact, it says that in the Gospel of John. Jesus says that. It was at Nicodemus. He said, the wind blows where you wish it, and you hear the sound of it, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it goes. So is everyone who is born of the Holy Spirit. In other words, the working of the Holy Spirit is as mysterious as the blowing of the wind. You see? And God reveals Himself to us in the most gentle of ways. Sometimes a whispering breeze, other times through happenings in our life, and sometimes through thoughts, remembrances, and stirrings of the heart. And when we, if we do that little exercise, I can almost guarantee that some of us will have thoughts and realizations that we're not used to having, that are rather perhaps even uncharacteristic of us. That, wow, as I'm sitting here and I clean the slate and I'm straining my soul for the whisperings of the Holy Spirit, I'm having more productive thoughts, more humbling thoughts, more understanding thoughts. 
Maybe understanding things better from someone else's perspective. Maybe something isn't as bad as we thought we think it is or thought it would be. Insights, realizations, courses of actions that we must take. But that's just the icing on the cake, so to speak, because once we learn to engage the Holy Spirit and God sees a heart that can empty itself and be teachable, much more profound happenings will happen in our life. When we least expect it, and we have to be very careful that, we have to, that when we engage the Holy Spirit, we have to understand some of the mysteries of it, that God is not a magician, and that just because we call upon the Holy Spirit or we want God to reveal Himself at a certain time doesn't mean He's going to perform a magic trick for us. It just doesn't work that way. But God will reveal Himself through the Holy Spirit, but often when we least expect it, but in a way that we know. So maybe we're seeking it, we're engaging it, and it doesn't happen, but then all of a sudden the first moment that happens where we're least expecting it is when it happens and God's sending a message that I'm here and I will give you the Holy Spirit but it's going to be on my terms when I know it's best for you because God doesn't want to create a relationship with us where we start treating the Holy Spirit like it's magic or something like that it just doesn't work that way God reveals himself when he knows we need it the most and oftentimes when we're at the most humble at our weakest and the most vulnerable, so it's ever more clear that the power is from Him, of course, and not from us. That's very important. And so, brothers and sisters, the Holy Spirit has a healing power in our life. Because once we start to open ourselves up to this aspect of the spiritual life that I believe is largely untapped for most of us, it has the ability to give us such deep and powerful experiences that override all the negative and painful experiences that this world inflicts upon us, right? And as I said a few weeks ago, that's what modern day social science is teaching us in psychology, right? You know, to, to heal from painful and traumatic experiences, we have to have deeper experiences that override those experiences. And the Holy Spirit has that power and potential to do that. We have to, to be open to it and to tap into it by creating that receptive heart. So today, it's going to be a little cooler outside. Take a moment, sit outside in the quiet and try that exercise. Pay very close attention. Be open to the Holy Spirit. God, did, you know, sometimes when we hear the Gospel reading, we think, oh, that's just the disciples. That's not us. That somehow is the... As the years have passed, those words have faded, and somehow we're, those things are no longer accessible to us. But nothing could be further from the truth. God did not leave the disciples orphans, and He does not leave us orphans. And He is the perfect parent who will never put us in an unfair situation and who will always be there for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen.